So BFG 50 is rolling along and after a uh, few years, I wanted to get back to my original design, which was the semi-automatic 50 caliber. And between when I first started playing with it back in the mid-90s to 2003 when I got back to it, I'd gone from using a crappy 2D CAD system to a 3D solid modeler, and man, the, the difference is amazing, and it's definitely the wave of the future. 3D solid models can go directly from the CAM program, and from there directly to the CNC machines to make parts. I designed the BFG-50A to use existing M82 magazines, but other than that, there were no constraints. My design goals were simple. The gun had to be accurate, dependable, lightweight, and well, look cool. Of course, I made it gas-operated with a fixed barrel. Trying to make a rifle accurate with a moving barrel is nearly impossible. Same with having a very effective muzzle brake. We can have a really great muzzle brake, and it won't slow this recoiling barrel down. If you have a brake this good on a recoil-operated gun, it won't even function, because it'll stop the barrel from coming back. Another great thing about having a fixed barrel is that the gun is unaffected by the addition of a suppressor. The BFG-50A's gas system is a direct impingement type and uses a gas tube that's similar to what's used on an M16. Unlike the M16 though, the gas isn't ported to go inside the bolt carrier and push on the back of the bolt. It just goes into a blind hole in the bolt carrier like a Swedish Jungmann or its copy, the Hakim. The French MAS-4956 uses a similar gas system, much cleaner than the M16 type. Now the BFG-50A has a a fairly standard three lug bolt, what's called a sliding plate extractor, uh, dual ejectors, but what's unique about it is that the lug surfaces are cut on a helix. And that means that when the bolt locks into the barrel extension, it's actually screwing itself in. Not only do we get away with using a tighter chamber than would otherwise be used in a semi-automatic gun, you've got a system which is much more tolerant of dirt and out of spec ammunition. I should add that uh, every material chosen for this gun was the ideal material for its purpose. No material is chosen because it would save money and make this gun more profitable for us. You know, in the grand scheme of things, using the absolute best steel versus the crappiest steel, it's, you know, pennies per pound. So, you know, we, we don't care about the extra pennies. We just want to make something good. Again, certainly we could have used some fairly exotic stuff like titanium and carbon fiber for many parts, but then the price goes way up. That being said, we'll most certainly be offering optional parts made from these materials in the future for those people who just got to have it. 